Hello, my name is Sebastian Segewis and I'm a developer for the Shopware Services team. Today I would like to show you how to debug JavaScript errors in the Shopware 6 storefront using the hot proxy and breakpoints. I want to focus on debugging JavaScript errors in the storefront, so I assume that you already got a working Shopware 6 development setup, know how to create a Shopware 6 plugin, and got a basic programming background, preferably in JavaScript. I created a JavaScript plugin containing errors and I will show you how to debug it. The goal is to disable the buy button, which doesn't work at the moment. Let's take a look what's going on here and open up the development tools of the browser. You can do so by pressing F12 on your keyboard. As you can see, there's an error in the console. All the information we can get from this error is that it's a type error and that the property this.buyButton is null. If you are lucky, you already know where the error occurred by now, but let's assume that we need more information. Let's jump into the debugger to find out more. Now we are greeted by this mess. We could try to pretty print this code in the browser, but it wouldn't help us. Trust me, I tried. Because the storefront code is in build mode, we are missing the source maps. To put it simply, source maps are a great way to map minified JavaScript code back to its original state. So with source maps, the minified code becomes human readable, at least if the author wrote it in a human readable way. To generate the source maps, it's easiest to change into the hot proxy mode. We do so by running dot slash psh.far storefront colon hot dash proxy in the system's terminal. After the comment finished compiling, we can change back to the browser. As you can see, nothing changed. This is because we have to add the hot proxy port to our address line. Now as we reload the page, you will notice two things. First, you will notice that there are more errors than before. But trust me, you can literally ignore all of them since they only tell us that the browser is unable to get some fonts because of the hot proxy mode. Second, you will note that the trace of our error looks a little bit different. Promising. Let's hop into the sources again by clicking on the first link. Now this looks like human readable code. Actually, I recognize this code. This is where I want to disable the buy button. Let's take a closer look. What you see here is a very basic JavaScript plugin class, which consists of one function with two lines of code. One thing that is special to the init function is that it runs as soon as an instance of the disable buy button plugin class gets initialized. In line 10, I grab the buy button with a query selector from a property this.el. In the context of this plugin and the way I registered it, this.el stands for the buy form, which is present on each product detail page and in the listing if buying from the listing is activated. And finally, in line 12, I set the disabled attribute of the query selected buy button to true. With the error message of the console and the code that is presented to us here, there are two things that could go wrong at this point. Either the element we query on, this.el, is not the element we expect it to be, or the selector we query for is wrong. Let's eliminate both of those options one after the other. To eliminate the point of failure, where this.el is not the buy form as we would expect, we toggle a breakpoint on line 10. Now we reload the page. And the debugger stopped exactly where we wanted on line 10. Now you have several options to debug what this.el really is. I will show you two. You can hover over this.el in the code and take a look at the overlay. As you scroll down, you will eventually find the property first element child. As I hover over the value of first element child, take a look at the DOM on the left side. The according element gets highlighted. And now we can already tell that the buy button is clearly in the element we are querying on. But I show you a second way on how to achieve the same result. You could also inspect the scope of the init function under the scope section. Here you will find the same element as well. Now that we know the element we query on is exactly what we expect, we should check the selector we are querying for. 
we are querying for an element with the ID btn by. Let's inspect the buy button to make sure it actually has this ID. Oh bummer, and one quick look and we realize the ID we used is only present as a class. So let's change that selector accordingly. I changed to my editor and here you see the exact same code as in the browser. Remember the magic of source maps. Now let's fix that selector by changing it from the ID btn by to the class btn by, save the changes and go back to the browser. As you can see, the buy button is now disabled and the code works as intended. Awesome. And that's all I wanted to show you. I hope you learned something and I wish you happy coding. <laughs>